Hello guys, if you watched my previous video, you already know what ionization energy is. But let's refresh our memory. So this is the minimum energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron of an isolated neutral gaseous atom or molecule. We can have successive ionization energies. So we can remove the first electron. This is going to be called the first ionization energy. When you are removing a second electron, this is called the second and ionization energy. We can have a third, fourth, and so forth ionization energies. Now, we also know that the higher the ionization energy, the more difficult it is to remove an electron. And we know that when we go left to right across the period in the periodic table, we are actually going to increase the ionization energy because the atomic size is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and it's going to be harder to remove that electron from the outermost shell. However, when we go down in a group, the ionization energy is going to go down because the atomic size increases and it's easier and easier to remove the outermost electron. All right, let's take a look at successive ionization energies on the example of aluminum. So we can remove the first electron and we are going to have an ionization energy of around 600 kilojoules per mole. Now we can go ahead and remove a second electron. Notice that in this case, we are starting with the aluminum cation forming an aluminum two plus ion. What happened to the second ionization energy? Well, it actually became larger than the first one. Why? Well, the number of protons is the same in aluminum, but we are removing more and more electrons. So the electrons are going to feel a larger attractive force from the nucleus where the protons are. Okay, so what do you think? What happens when we remove a third electron? Will the ionization energy go up or down? It will go up again, right? Because you are just taking away an extra electron and the number of protons is still the same. So we have another big jump. What happens when you remove a fourth electron? Well, in that case, you have actually a huge jump. So the trend is the following. When you are removing the first electron, you have a little jump, then the second, third, and then the fourth one, you are going to have a huge increase in the ionization energy. You go from around 3,000 kilojoules per mole to 11,000, almost 600 kilojoules per mole. So why is this huge jump? Let's take a look at the electron configuration of aluminum. So we know that aluminum, actually the 13th element in the periodic table, so it's going to have 13 electrons, which means that I'm going to first fill up the 1s orbital with two electrons, then the 2s with two electrons, then we have the 2p. How many electrons in the p orbital? Six, right? Then we have three S, we can use two more up. So up to this point, I used up two plus two plus six, that's 10 plus two, that's 12. So I still have one electron that I'm going to place on the 3P orbital as 3P1. So let's take a look at the orbital diagrams. So this is the one S, I'm going to have my two electrons here, 2s, the two electrons here. On the 2p orbitals, I'm going to have a total of six electrons, like so. And then 3s, I'm going to have two electrons. And on the 3p orbitals, I'm going to have one single electron. Okay, so what happens in the first ionization process? I'm simply going to remove this one electron. This is the furthest away, okay? That's the highest energy electron. All right, then I'm going to remove in the second ionization an electron from one of the three S electrons. Let's remove this one. All right, in the third ionization, I'm going to remove a third electron 
from the 3s orbital again what happens in the force ionization i am actually going to remove a core electron from the 2p orbital so let's say this one so the real big jump comes when i'm removing core electrons from an element remember that the outermost shell electrons are the valence electrons in case of aluminum those are the 3s and 3p electrons and all these 1s through 2p electrons are called core electrons all right so let's summarize it it requires more and more energy to remove each successive electron and when all valence electrons have been removed it takes a great deal more energy to remove the next electron which is a core electron i hope this makes sense let's take a look at transition metals so transition metals are somewhat interesting we know that they are in the d block of the periodic table this means that we are going to fill up their d sublevels with up to 10 electrons now what's interesting about these is that many cannot lose enough electrons to attain a noble gas electron configuration which is the most stable electron configuration and the majority is capable of adopting ions with different charges just think about iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus now we know based on the alpha principle that electrons will fill the 4s sublevel first and then they are going to fill up the 3d sublevel right but what's interesting about transition metals is that the outermost s electrons are always the first to be removed in the process of forming a transition metal cation so let's take a look at what happens when we are forming an iron 2 plus ion so we removed two electrons from iron to iron 2 plus now the iron's electron configuration is argon and then 3d6 4s2 so the two electrons that i'm actually going to remove are not from the d orbitals but from the s orbital so i'm going to remove these two electrons and end up with an argon 3d6 electron configuration why is it happening well when you start to fill up the electron orbitals the 4s orbital can be a little bit closer to the nucleus that will give it a lower energy but when you start adding the 3d electrons what happens is they are going to push out the 4s electrons further away from the nucleus so it's going to be easier to take them off first so that's why in case of transition metals you are always going to lose first the s electrons and many transition metal cations actually have a two plus charge because of this all right let's talk about irregularities in the ionization energy trend so we know that as we go left to right across a period we are going to increase ionization energy because we are decreasing the atomic size but if you look at this figure here we can see that when we go from hydrogen to helium it does happen the ionization energy increases quite a bit and then in the second period when we go from lithium to neon we have the same general trend however there are two irregularities when we go from beryllium to boron there is a dip and when we go from oxygen to nitrogen there is a dip why is it happening well let's take a look at the electron configurations of those atoms right here and remember completely filled sublevels are more stable than partially filled sublevels and the sublevels which exactly half filled is more stable than partially filled sublevel which is not half full 
So basically, you will want to achieve a nice symmetry. You are either going to have orbitals that are completely filled, or you are going to have halfway filled orbitals or sublevels. Now, let's take a look at the electron configuration of nitrogen first. Check out the periodic table. So nitrogen is our seventh element, which means that we are going to have seven electrons. First electron goes on the 2s orbital, actually the first two, then 2s2, I use the four electrons, and then 2p, I still have three electrons to go. Now, how does the orbital diagram look? Here, I'm going to have one box for the 1s orbital, another box for the 2s orbital, I already added the electrons, and for the 2p orbitals, I'm going to place the three electrons right there. Now, how about oxygen? Oxygen is the next element after nitrogen. So it's supposed to have a higher ionization energy than nitrogen, but it doesn't. Why? Well, it has eight electrons, right? So let's place the eight electrons on the orbitals, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Let's draw out the orbital diagram. We have the first box for the 1s, the second box for the 2s, and we are going to have here the 2p electrons. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so when you are removing an electron from a nitrogen atom, which electron will you remove? One of the three P electrons, right? So let's remove this one. Nitrogen had a nice symmetrical structure. It had its sublevel halfway filled, and we know that it's actually more stable than partially filled sublevels, right? So nitrogen is like, oh, I had that nice symmetry, but I just lost it. I'm pretty sad. What's up with oxygen? Well, when oxygen loses an electron, it's going to be removed from the same 2p orbital. However, it had four electrons to start with. So it can get rid of this roommate, right? There are two electrons living together in one room. And now oxygen as a cation is going to have a symmetrical halfway field orbital. So oxygen is happy. This is why oxygen's ionization energy is going to be actually a little bit lower than nitrogen's because oxygen is going to create a more stable orbital. Now what happens with beryllium and boron? So let's get back to the periodic table. We have beryllium right here with four electrons and boron with five electrons. So the electron configuration for beryllium is going to be 1s2, 2s2, and the diagram with the boxes is here. It's nice, it's happy, it has a fully filled 1s and 2s orbital. How about boron? Boron has five electrons, right? So we are going to have the first two on the 1s, then the two more on the 2s, and then one on the 2p orbital. And here is the orbital diagram. So let's fill this up. And on the 2p orbital, we are going to have another electron. What happens when we ionize beryllium? Well, beryllium is like, hey, I'm going to lose my beautiful symmetry. I had a fully filled 2s orbital, and now it's going to lose an electron from there. But how about boron? Boron is happy to lose that electron because it's going to get a nice symmetrical 2s orbital without having an extra electron on the 2p orbital. So we are going to remove this, creating a more stable structure for boron. So we thought that the ionization energy of boron is going to be higher than beryllium's, but it's actually the opposite because boron is going to achieve this nice, beautiful, symmetrical structure. Okay, I hope it makes sense. See you in the next video.